So we are indeed car camping. Sherry's just kind of getting the tent finalized. And we are car camping and it's, we're just going for one night, but we have a lot of gear. So I'm gonna unpack my bag and kind of show you what we have. So yeah, always a journal when we're camping. This is my camping journal wherever we camp, whether it be at our camp or if it's on the big lake. A couple of books choices to read. One is The Forest by Stuart Edward White, which is uh, in, in large part about the Agawa River, which we're, we just, we're, we're not too far from being here on the big lake. And then Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. It's basically like reading someone di someone's diary, which is a bit creepy, I guess, but got some good le lessons in there. Some warm clothes, which I'll just put in here. A tarp, which we may or may not put up. I don't think it's supposed to rain. Um, some unmentionables. And that's about it. We have the BioLite camp stove that we like to cook on and our platypus water filter. I think that's it for my bag. <laughs> so we've got some electronics for, for our videographing. Um, these are two power banks that are just awesome to have when we're in the backcountry. And then some GoPro stuff. We've got a new toy that you guys might not be aware of, but we have a drone that um, we just started to learn how to use. May or may not get some drone footage on this trip. There is some that I've done recently. I went to uh, to our camp in the woods of Alabama and I tested it out. And got some really cool footage on that. We've got this gimbal, which is kind of a fun word, but anyway, this is like it's a stabilizer, so it stabilizes your footage when you're shooting with our phone, which the most of our stuff is. Our food bag is massive. Again, we're coming for overnight. Here's Cher who packed the food bag. But this thing this is substantial. There's our GoPro with the drone inside and all that stuff. And then we've got our camp chairs, which the last time we were backcountry camping, we didn't get to bring with us. So we're really looking forward to that, even though we have this big, We have huge, a picnic table. Huge picnic table. <laughs> and our camp chairs, and our cooking pots. What do you have in your bed, Cher? We're doing like an unboxing for the for the people. Oh. Um. To see our massive uh, <laughs> pack where we can almost <laughs> see our car from our from our campsite here. Yeah, we've had a busy summer, so we wanted to just get out quickly and enjoy the weather. So we have toiletries, journal, book. Sleeping gear. We would never bring that book that size. Can you check out the size of this book? So if, if we're tenting and we're like hiking or whatever, a book this size <laughs> is kind of off limits. So share we're, yeah. we're just taking advantage. Sleeping mats, we have the climate insulated sataki, sleeping mats and clothes. That's all I have. Motorcycles, which you love to hear when you're camping. Yeah. Oh and a couple of brews. We also, yeah, we brought some uh, craft beer. Unfortunately, when we were packing up, we're from Sault Ste. Marie, and we have a few friends who own a few different breweries, but unfortunately, Cher couldn't find in the beer store, because that was the only thing that was open in the morning by like 10 o'clock or something. We didn't plan so, well. Yeah, we didn't, but <laughs> Next support time. Outspoken Brewing and Northern Superior Brewing, if you can. They're fantastic. Also, Thompson's Winery as well top-notch uh, fruit wines. Yeah. We have Muskoka Brewery. Which is also another wonderful. Yeah. Well, we don't normally drink on camera. But the Detour is a fine beer. It's a nice session Here's. ale. Cheers to that. Here's to beach camping. Beaching. <laughs> now we're going to unpack all this stuff and find a place for it. I'll just put it back in our car. There's no bear um, thing here, so I think we're just gonna ditch our food bag in the car, eh, Chef? Yeah, um, we usually hang yeah. our food. 
or um, we noticed when we did the coastal trail most of the sites had a, a bare box for our food but uh, we haven't seen one here and our car is very close so we're just going to run it and put it in there. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to show you two of our favorite things, or one of our favorite things is our camp chair. This is kind of a luxury. When we're canoe tripping, we almost always have use them because um, they don't really take up a lot of room for the amount of comfort. Like these are, I would eat dinner at these at our home table. <laughs> They're so comfortable, but I'd be sitting at the table like that and I'd look even sillier than I do right now. But these chairs go together in a, in a jiff. These we got from Great Lakes Outfitters. Formerly Joe's Sports, awesome customer service. Um, actually, this one is brand new because uh, we, under warranty, had to replace one of them. Um, but yeah, they were absolutely gems in getting this replaced for us. But everything is just together; nothing comes apart. Whammo, blammo! There's the frame, and then this is the Chinook camp chair. And we just have a two bottom little things here. top thingamajiggers. Now you've got yourself comfort and style in the backcountry. But it's got a back and it's just like it is the bee's knees. So there's our camp chair. The chair is um, maybe our I don't know if it's my favorite but it, it's top it's three. It's our most luxurious item. <laughs> but it doesn't take up much space. It's our pillows. A camping pillow like a blow up pillow yeah. is takes up absolutely zero space like it take I mean even when it's inflated it's not huge I see people with these huge ones that are like two feet wide and it's like we don't need that just something underneath your head yeah. that's like air you're you're riding on a cloud of heavenly dreams and they pack up to like nothing. It's smaller than your fist yeah, yeah. Right. so definitely recommend and you can see our inside the den of iniquity our beautiful uh camp um, inflatable mattresses which also pack up to really really small and they are such a such a delight to sleep on and then our little uh, sleeping bags and that's us man and <laughs> while, while I've got you here um, and you're in the backcountry this is typically uncool you don't want to that's why you never strip bark off of like a live tree just get it off of the ground there's bound to be lots but i believe if you take the bark of any tree and if you just get that that layer of bark off all the way around so that there's no communication or water or nutrient movement that's how it moves up and down or a lot of stuff moves up and down the tree then the, it kills the tree and that's just like not cool man especially when there's so much birch around that you're bound to be able to find some in there don't take it off the tree, you dodo heads. It is just too gorgeous out here to not be swimming. I think it gets deep pretty quickly here, which is nice. There's no mucking about. Oh yeah. Oh, that is the stuff. It's actually, this is like warm. <laughs> this is, Superior is warm today. It's so, so gorgeous. Uh, today this is one of the last I don't know I don't like to sort of put hard timelines on seasons but it's one of the last weekends of summer our kids are grown um, although one is still in university so I guess summer does have a delineation a delineation there but um, we are perpetual summer and when you just camp whenever and wherever you want. So, but this is absolutely magical. So we had to get out, even if it's just a single overnight camp, 
we had a little bit of a change of plan, so a Saturday and Sunday opened up for us. And uh, yeah, I mean, how could you not? So, so good. Let's see if I can convince Sherry to get in. Sure, I can. Sherry to go for a swim <laughs> to enjoy the oh Sherry's gonna go have a dip This is the point where she decides she doesn't like swimming. But it does get deep nice and quickly here. So she tortures herself. Pretending it's colder than it really is. Prolonging the model. Once the initial shock wears off, she's fine. Look, see, it's all good. <laughs> she's even thumbs upping. Okay. So Sherry is just sun tanning over here. Part of our glamping experience <laughs> when we're when we're hiking the coastal trail or we're backcountry portaging, we don't typically take the time to. Uh, that's alliteration there. Typically, take the time to suntan or lounge around, but we're living life on Easy Street here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of scout out some wood opportunities being so close to me, being so close to the um, highway where I'd rather not pick away at the forest if I can help it and I'm imagining we're going to be able to find some relatively easily accessible dry um, drifting that we don't have to pick away at the forest. I'm, I'm using the GoPro right now. I have no idea if you can see me even right now if I'm in frame. But I'm gonna go wood hunting. It's my favorite kind of hunting. Along the coast of Lake Superior. a very heavily beach you see here when you're wearing flip-flops you're just constantly walking on pebbles so you might as well not be wearing flip-flops but we're just going that way to where there seems to be possible driftwood possibly usable as firewood we shall see
Decided to take a solo one night, um, one night kind of in the provincial park break together, and um, most of the dazers have abandoned the beach, so we kind of have it all to ourselves. Other than one campsite next to us, quite a bit down, but um, camping on a beach site is a little trickier to find some firewood, so. Poor Jay's been scouring the beach. I don't know if you can see him, but he's like, he's found some firewood for our campfire so we can have dinner without having to cut down any trees in the park. So. turning out to be a beautiful night. Found some driftwood. Brought some back. So we're gonna have... We now a nice fire tonight. Very small, we always keep them small, but found some driftwood. The share is cutting us up some snacks. Oh, he brought a whole brick of cheese. So this is, you can tell, that we are definitely car camping. Because we have like a whole brick of cheese. We got a cutting board. This is like, uh, lap, we got glamping indeed. We are like at a resort here, gang. You can see some of our, some of our equipment. We've got our little wind stopper on our phones which yeah we have hundreds and hundreds of dollars of camera gear but the dollar store tripod and our cell phones <laughs> seem to be the workhorses um, we also have this fun gimbal that's really nice for stable shots if we want to get any like moving shots and we want to keep them stable so that my shaking like this doesn't get all annoying for you guys but thank you, Cher, for cutting up some roots. Hey guys. So it's the late afternoon, I would say. It's probably about 5 p.m., maybe 5.30 p.m. And um, we've had a nice, lazy afternoon. We've done some swimming, some sun training. Cher did the sun training. I did most of the swimming. <laughs> did some foraging for some driftwood and found some. Not a lot. There's, you know, a little bit over there. Um, and then I want to tell you of a, something we found out that's less than good. It's been a bit dramatic, if I'm honest. So, it's pretty bad. It sounds pretty bad already. Um, so, Sherry was looking through the food bag and noticed that there wasn't any coffee packed. And so Sherry packed the food bag herself today while I was at another engagement and but thought that she heard me say something about having coffee stashed somewhere. But anyway, so we don't have any... There's no coffee. I want you to understand me when I say this. We don't have any coffee. Zero. Zero. A total amount of zero coffee. So, so we, we're going home. We are 60 <laughs> kilometers in any direction. Probably more like 70 to, well, I'm not, we don't want to triangulate exactly where we are for whatever reason. But, um, there's no coffee. We're not going home and there's no by. coffee anywhere near us. <laughs> so, uh, we are going to try to find some cedar. There's not a there's not abundant cedar trees 
here, and we're going to see if we can find some cedar. We're hunting for cedar tea. And so that we can have cedar tea in the morning as opposed to coffee. Well, we can have cedar tea, not as opposed to, but to tide us over until coffee. Yes. So, yes. that so sherry all doesn't is not lost, murder. No. Unless we don't find a cedar tree. <laughs> and then all is lost. But we do have a neighbor just in the, in the neighboring site who, oh, there's a whole bunch of drama there as well, but I guess someone was camped. There's only no, two sites where wait, we are. Okay, we can edit that in. Yeah. We have a neighbor close by that we could ask <laughs> for coffee in the morning. Probably not. We People probably bring not. excesses of coffee. People typically would bring an excess of coffee and would not <laughs> ever forget coffee if it was so important to them. Yes. Nobody would ever forget coffee. Why? So we'll go ask our neighbor. I'm going to ask our neighbor in a minute. She seems nice. She has a dog. Dog people are good people, typically. <laughs> Not always, but typically. So, yeah, we're going to ask her if she has coffee. And if, we're, if we're not successful in, in our search for cedar tea. Either way, I think cedar tea is a good idea. So, yeah. vitamin C and all that. <laughs> and fellowship with our friends, our new neighbor friend. So, this is how we do not do well camping. Okay, friends, here's camp. Here's where we last, last left you. And here we are. Our long hunt for cedar trees is over. Sherry is collecting cedar boughs and cedar leaves for our cedar tea in the morning. I'm seeing quite a few blueberry plants here as well. Um, it's obviously well past blueberry season. We're in late summer now. There's a little mountain ash growing beside this cedar tree. And that's a wild sherry picking, harvesting her cedar leaves so that she doesn't choke her partner in the morning. What'd you get, Chef? I found cedar leaves. Yay! Say anything, you don't have to do anything. You can be good. Sure, what is it that you're doing here? Dropping peppers on the ground. Peppers and onions going on the ground. Okay, so what do we do? We're doing a sausage and pepper and onion and potato. Yes. Bake. Foil pack. Foil pack. Cherry is what we call the strong silent type. So she <laughs> likes to leave things mysterious. <laughs> So that you guys can figure this out on your own. I, however, like to over-explain things until you hate to hear the sound of my voice. So I think we're a good combination that way. But so she's making food that we are going to cook on this fire, and hopefully we will enjoy eating it. I'm sure that we will. It's still a beautiful night. You guys were wondering. It's not. It's evening. Six thirty. Seven. The evening is beautiful. I'm just processing firewood over here. Over here, if I can do the editing well enough, that'll be funny.
sorry, what? Uh -huh. The saw's not great. We have we have better ones, we just didn't bring them. Right beside the coffee. It's stirring the coffee right now. It's probably <laughs> drinking coffee right now, our good son. Nice. Ay, ay, ay. Hi. Hey, you can't look at me. Tough guy. It's kind of handy, car camping. Car camp, it's pretty handy. If the women can't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. And her laugh suggests otherwise. But that's some firewood. That hopefully is enough to cook these two little uh, piakajas. These little piakajas there. Uh, the sausage, pepper, onion, potato combination that you watched Sherry cut a little bit earlier, put into this little uh, fire pit here. It's a bit breezy and a bit motorcycle-y sometimes, as you'll hear. But goodness gracious, what an evening. How lucky are we? Northern Ontario. Hopefully you can hear me. It is breezy, but I believe that this fun windsock that I've got on my microphone should help that. But what a gorgeous, gorgeous evening. How lucky are we? It took us an hour and 20 minutes to get here. This beautiful bit of solitude. Because Sherry and I are currently not, we're just going to not say where we are. I'm sure there's a reason for that, but we're just, well, maybe because it's super accessible, but um, maybe in the comments, you guys can not guess, but know where we are. Just from the panoramic shots that we've done so far, and just from the tone of our voices, and the waterfowl that we've shown, maybe you could tell exactly where we are. So in the comments, please let us know if you know where this is. It's not like it's a huge mystery, but if you know, you know. Well, he he was from, from hey, Ontario. Yeah. That's where like I that. live. That's where my teacher was. I feel like she was his mom. So I Sherry is video. pretty sure that she was taught are you videoing? Yeah. <laughs> I was going to start a fire and people in the YouTube land like to see yeah, a fire get started. Oh, we better get this little insect out of the fire pit. Knocked him off my hand into the fire pit. I couldn't have bore the weight of seeing him burn, perish. But Sherry's pretty sure that um, Gordon Lightfoot, we were just randomly singing Sundown here at the campsite. And uh, I'm pretty sure that she was taught by none other than Gordon Lightfoot's mother, Mrs. Lightfoot. Plausible. Plausible. <laughs> anyway, so people like to light fires in the uh, backcountry with fire steel and various other bushcraft techniques, like maybe the uh, bow. What do they call that when they, when they, when they spin the... Ah, very untechnical we are. Where when you spin a little piece of wood into another piece of wood and that creates enough heat to start a fire. Anyway, that's all well and good and I think those are very, very important techniques to, to master if you think you're going to get lost in the bush. But for me, a Bic lighter uh, is just about infallible. We always carry matches with us and fire starter. And we also have actually a little alcohol stove. Uh, if it's 
soaking wet, an alcohol stove works really, really well. To boil some water to make coffee or cedar tea, or rice or something. But, um, but yeah, a good old Bic lighter works nice. So we're just gonna light this on fire. This is how we make a fire. Um, we gather all the wood ahead of time that you're gonna need, and we start with birch bark or some other flammable, and then these small um, but very, very lovely burnable uh, boughs of, this is balsam fir, and I think this is pine, like red pine, and uh, those will light up nice, nice from this birch bark once it's it's lit. And then we try to keep it as small as possible. So we'll put on these little sticks here that you'll see. And everything will just sit in this small little area. And uh, then we're going to put on our sausage, potato. There's got to be a mushroom. Oh, there's mushrooms in there too, gang. Come on. Oh, I'm going to get this fire lit. This is, now I'm excited. You said the M word mushrooms. Okay, let's get this lit. Thunder, you better take care of the sea and run my best Sometimes I think it's a shame. <laughs> you can never understand, old Gord. And then, so that should just go. It is a bit breezier than I like to have. Start the fire. But that should go nice. As you can see, it's going nice. But it won't go long, right? Because it's just twigs. But it's enough to get heat going. And then what you do is you try to put hardwood on or, you know, solid wood that'll create coals, which this will not do. Because it's so small and it's, it's soft wood. So what you try to do is contain, that's a little bigger than I wanted. Try to contain the uh, concentrate the fire a bit to a smaller area and then these larger and I call these larger but they're also very small pieces of wood those will create coals But you do need the medium sized wood as well to keep the fire lit. So that ought to get a fire started there, friends. Here, deep in the back country where you can hear the Slightest movement of a Toyota Camry. You've got this backcountry iron fireplace <laughs> at your disposal, and this eight-foot um, picnic table. We're living in a lap of luxury, but it's still important to be able to light a fire, or else camping is a bummer. If you're cold, you can't light a fire.
the fire is making coals, so we'll be able to move those two tinfoil packs down to the coals very, very soon. Pretty tough life. I think that's cooked, babe. As far as I'm concerned, that there's cooked ready for dinner. Let's eat it. Okay. So Sherry put together this beautiful concoction of sausages, mushrooms, which was a, a late, a late addition for my I didn't know that. Mushrooms, potatoes, peppers, onions, garlic, garlic and some spices. So, <coughs> read them and weep, friends. And we might weep when we eat it because it's not very good. They're not spicy. Hot, and the potatoes are from local. Super G. Those are good. Okay. They make good food. They don't make food. Um, they sell good food. Yeah. <coughs> I breathed in potatoes just a minute ago. So I have a bit of the cops. A bit of a case of the cops, friends. Yeah, we don't we usually don't uh, pack in a lot of food because we're usually deeper in the factory and we don't carry a seat there. Enjoying food. I hope that you enjoy food. Mm -hmm. The sun is setting and makes it clear. Sorry, I'm talking away from the microphone. I still did it. I did it again. I'm talking away from the microphone. So the sun is setting on Lake Superior, and we're enjoying such a beautiful meal with homemade spices and um, locally grown meats and vegetables and uh, it's such a wonderful treat to be here. It's even nice to hear the traffic go by behind us just because we know we're, we're here, we're alive and garlic tastes real good, real good. So Sherry is making bannock for us on this campfire. Oh, I think there's cranberries, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
cranberries and cinnamon and love and red pine fueled fire oh. cinematic uh, circle tour of the cooking bannock now we're talking okay so we've <laughs> Bannock is supposed to be baked, we know this, but uh, we just have a, like a small smoldering fire, mostly heat, very little flame, and Cher, you're going to be the first to test it out. Oh. Well, you made it, so we want the honor of, of testing it out. Hot. Hot. Hot stuff baby this evening? Do you taste the cinnamon? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the cranberries? That's so good. Nice. So good. Mm. That used to be two distinct patties of bannock. Oops. Okay, we're handing the camera over to Sherry so that. Jay can now <laughs> try his first day. Ooh, it smells nice. Oh, oh, baby. Oh, my God. Hold on. I taste butter. <laughs> I taste butter. I'll we'll have a little bit more of that. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, there's butter in there for sure. And cinnamon. And flour. And love and affection. And cranberries. Is there anything that I'm missing? Water. Lake Superior water, actually. Mmm. Mmm. I feel just like a... Jean-Guy the voyageur traveling the length of the Lake Superior, yeah? Here we come. Only I'm working a lot less hard. Mmm, that's so good, babe. Yeah, have another bite. That is what a dilapidated bit of bannock looks like. When you're not really super concerned about the aesthetic of it, and you just want to Taste the bannock. Hey? It tastes so good. Mm hmm. It tastes like another piece. <laughs> you can't even see me. Being mischievous.
you making, Cher? Mm -hmm. Trying to make a quick pop. That's asparagus, and then there's some eggs. Oh. It's pretty exciting stuff here. What else goes in there, Cher? Um, goat's cheese. Goat's cheese. Master chef at work. How did you sleep, Cher? Uh, I'm not sure. There was a lot of uh, lightning last night all around us. And like just a few drops of rain, but. Yeah, like five. Yeah, <laughs> you can count all the yeah, five it drops. Seems Yeah, we're going to have a nice breakfast here of this uh, fancy frittata that Cher is making. The cedar tea is yummy. And the cedar tea. I don't know if we told you guys, but we made a fatal, near fatal error yesterday. Okay. But, well, see, I haven't had coffee this morning. That's why I can't remember. We had made a near fatal error of both of us thinking the other one grabbed the coffee. And uh, neither one of us did, but we're having cedar tea with maple syrup um, in lieu of our morning coffee. And it's actually really, really nice. Yeah, let's show it to the camera. So it looks like we, Cher and I, eat off, off the same plate sometimes. <laughs> and we only bring one plate and we sometimes finish each other's... Mm -hmm. oh. yeah, try one. Ah, see, look at how smooth, <laughs> smooth, just like that. It's very hot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> cut it up. This is fancy backcountry food for us. Fancy food. <laughs> Usually it's dehydrated stuff. <clears throat> Fresh asparagus is like kind of a luxury item for sure. Ha, <laughs> ha,